heart, Lord. Open the eyes of my heart. I want to see you. I want to see you. To see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. Pour out your power. sacrifice of praise came to mind and I was like oh that's a good one we should sing that and the more I thought about the words to the song sometimes bringing praise to the Lord is a sacrifice I mean we don't always feel great we don't always feel like worshiping the Lord but nevertheless he's worthy of all the praise no matter our circumstance no matter what kind of day we've been having you know he is so worthy and and we are thankful for that um I don't know if you guys have ever played this game before, but I do sometimes, where you think about you thanking the Lord for everything that you're thankful for, and if you don't thank Him for it, then tomorrow you wake up and you're not going to have it. So when you go, when you think about it that way and you start thanking the Lord, thank you for my family, thank you for my home, thank you for my car, thank you Jesus for blessing me with a job, thank you Jesus for my health, and you just keep going and going and it snowballs and it snowballs, and then you just can't help but love on the Lord after you think of all the things that He's blessed you with. So let's tonight, as we're worshiping, let's think about all the things that God has done for us, how He's blessed us, and how thankful we are, and how much we love Him, and just lose yourself in worshiping Him because He is so worthy of all of the praise that we can ever even give Him, and much more than that. Amen. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. We bring the sacrifice of praise into the house of the Lord. Thanksgiving and 
voice for he has made me glad oh he has made me glad yes he has made me glad and i will rejoice for he has made me glad he has made me glad oh he has made me glad and i will rejoice for he has made me glad about the Lord and how much we love him tonight. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he filled me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up, Holy 
heart is broken for whatever reason the Lord is that strength for us he loves us and nobody can satisfy us like Jesus thank you Lord who can satisfy my soul like you and who on earth could comfort me and love me like you do who could
place. Just a big thank you uh, on behalf of Brother Craig and Sister Kathy on uh, Churchill for those that cooked, those that worked, those that came back and made a donation. A uh, very handsome amount was raised for them today. And we're so thankful for everybody that participated in that. And keep them in your prayers as they can continue down this journey. But we know the Lord is blessing them and touching them. And God's doing a great, a great work that we know nothing about. And we're so thankful for that. Okay. God bless you too. baby given from glory wrapped in humanity one man will call to the heart of the common for there God's kingdom shall be one rock builders rejected now ranks as the cornerstone since time began, not a footprint of man ever left a mark like one. One lowly figure awakes from his slumber to quiet a deadly storm. 
one at the well waits with life-giving water for a thirsty woman would come. One heart full of compassion whose touch caused the lame to run. The force as a thousand armies come marching shall never contest the will shoulder his cross up a hill one voice alone that could order the angels is silent by his only one king suffered and gave his life the power of death brought down one life will challenge the limits of nature and rise with the victor's crown. Every knee shall bow in reverence, his name ring out from every tongue. Every eye shall witness his wonder, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the one. Every knee shall bend in reverence. His name ring out from every tongue. Every eye shall witness his wonder, Jesus. Jesus, Jesus, the one, the one, Jesus, the Amen. Aren't you thankful you know the one? Why don't we just put our hands together and praise the one. He's King of Kings. Lord of all, thank you, Jesus, that you did all those things for us. Your truth still marches on all these years later. Your birth and death mean so much to us still and your resurrection. Amen. Amen. I'm thankful I know the one. And he's incredible. That one has changed our lives. Amen. For thousands of years. Amen. One quick announcement. Uh, just to add on to the other plethora, is that those children of trailblazers that are going on the trip, they, they have permission slips. So if you want to see Brother or Sister Dudley or someone from trailblazers, um, please be sure that they have a permission slip signed so that we can all be legal, okay? So um, if you would, let's stand and let's turn to the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 45. As you're turning there, I want to give honor to Pastor and Sister Martin. As you have well figured out by now, they are out of town and they are spending some time vacationing. And uh, we give them honor and we uh, certainly um, don't take this privilege lightly. And um, to, to be able to address our church family and to stand behind this podium, the pastor preaches and leads us and guides us. We have a great pastor, don't we? Amen. Amen. I think it's all right to give a hand to our first family, even though they're not here. And... Um, honor to my brothers in the ministry as well, Brother Dudley, Brother Henley, Brother Jokey, and so many of this great church. Thank you for being so kind to my wife and I. We have just a few more services 
remaining until it's our final one during this chapter of our life. Who knows what the next chapter would hold, but uh, we're so thankful for all your kind words thus far, and uh, we're, we're um, just, it's, it's challenging to accept the next part of your life knowing that you have to leave this part behind. But let's turn to the word of the Lord, and we're going to, we have, I have something on my heart that I want to bring to you tonight. Luke chapter 5, or 6, verse 45, a good man. Out of the good treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is good. And an evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For of the abundance of the heart his mouth speaketh. And so tonight I would like to preach on this subject, speak on this subject from the abundance. From the abundance. If you would bow your heads and close your eyes with me and let's spend some moments in prayer. Jesus. We come before you right now, Lord, and we know that your word is already anointed, the word that is in these scriptures. I thank you, Jesus, for the opportunity that I have to be able to search those scriptures out, Lord, and to bring a message to this congregation. We're so grateful that your words show us how to live. I pray that your anointing would be here tonight and that you would help somebody's heart, Lord, to be bettered by your word, that you would draw us closer to you. That this message is not just about what I have to say, but it is about what you would want to say to somebody's life, to encourage them, to have them to take an inventory of their life. And I pray, Jesus, that when it's time for the altar call, we would come down to the front and we would have a difference made in our life. In Jesus' name, and everyone said, amen. Amen. You may be seated. In life... Many people gather many possessions. There are storage buildings, garages, sheds, basements, attics, closets filled with boxes like these or filled with things from everything from heirlooms to hairbrushes, from totes to boxes to bags, which I hate, containers, I don't like trash bags in my storage building, I'd rather them be in a box or a tote, containers, trash bags, all filled with what seem to be priceless treasures. Some of us have more than others, not just because we may be more well off financially, but we've just gathered more things, some of us have, (laughs) but most likely we would all agree that we probably all have a little bit too much junk around our house. I call it junk. I call it stuff. I don't mean that disrespectful. I just call it that. I'll say tonight to my wife, did you grab your junk off of the stage tonight, off the platform? That means her purse and her bag. I don't mean it as junk. I just say that word. You know, we just say words without thinking. And she says, it's not junk. (laughs) So I'm sure that if you've ever had the experience of moving from one home to another, you come face to face with the abundant amount of things that you have. Now, this is not a message about my move, but it did spur on some thoughts that you'll hear tonight. (laughs) Um, If you have time, you may have a minor crisis upon your hands if you are not a good decision maker. You have to settle whether or not you can live with something or not. You may ask yourself this. This is a good tip. This is a life hack, as someone would say. Have I used this within the last 30 days? Have I used this in the last 30 weeks? And some of you, you could ask the question, have I used this in the last 30 years? (laughs) I'm not here to judge you because I stand condemned myself before you. (laughs) If I've made it without it so far, I could probably do without it from now on. However, there are just some things we cannot live without. I was going through a tub the other day, and it had some cords in it, like the cords for your cordless cameras and your phones that you've had throughout all the years. And I just save them because I never know when I'm going to need one. But I thought, when's the last time I got in this box? And I hadn't gotten there in a while, so half of them went in the trash. Praise hallelujah. Would you clap your hands and thank God with me? We got rid of some junk. All right, I know I'm being silly, but we do have a message on our heart tonight. And that is this, that I read this scripture several weeks ago, maybe even months ago, but recently I have been going through an abundance in my home. 
and it prompted me to think about this message tonight when pastor asked me to speak during this time is that our most prized possession in our lives ought to be our walk with the Lord Jesus Christ and our lives should be abundant with godly qualities and attributes and I think we would all agree and say amen to that again and I think we need to ask ourselves back to our opening scripture of you know from the abundance of the heart the mouth speaks we say that to our children you say that to someone when whenever uh, they're saying things that we they sh they ought not be saying and they say well I didn't mean it when they say something mean about somebody well from the abundance of the heart the mouth speak it right That's what we say we've heard grandma or aunt or somebody say that and but I, I got to thinking about, well, what is abounding in my heart? What, what is abundant in my heart? What should, what should just be spilling out of my heart? What should I have stacked up all over my heart and all over my life? And I thought, well, this is a good message for us to look at what is abounding in our hearts. Because it's important to look at that because what is in our hearts will drive our lives. Uh, and, and so this should cause us to, to desire to have good things in our heart so that we will be driven to do good things. Because from the very beginning of time, we see that human beings are driven to possess things. Even when they seem to be have, have been given everything, Adam and Eve, for example, they were given the garden, all the fruit, all the animals, a utopia, God visiting with them in the cool of the day, all the time, everything they could need, except the tree that was in the midst of the garden, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. The Lord just asked them, don't eat of this one. But they didn't feel like they had enough. And so they wanted more. And they were, of course, deceived by, by, by the serpent, by the devil, trying to convince them that's really not what God said. Even Cain and Abel, the first offspring of Adam and Eve, here they were bringing their sacrifices, and Cain, he brought of his crops. Abel brought of his flocks. He brought something that cost him a little bit more than maybe Cain. He was the one of the field, and he could have probably raised. Maybe that just didn't cost him as much. We're not really sure, but God was not satisfied with his sacrifice. Cain wanted to keep, he wanted to possess some things that he thought was important when all God wanted was for him to give of his abundance as his brother Abel had done. So from the very beginning, we see that sometimes we can have the ability to want more and to stack things up in our life thinking, well, this is what's important and I'm going to hold on to this like Cain did with his flock when he wouldn't sacrifice of his flock and they only gave of his crop. Tonight, we need to be willing to examine our hearts and to see what holds our heart and what our heart, heart holds on to. We need to be willing to see what is pulling at the heartstrings. We need to be seeing what is holding our heart back. Is there something that is too abundant in our heart? Uh, Luke chapter 6, verse 45, our opening scripture. This, this instance of the word abundance means this, that which fills the heart. So we could read it this way. Uh, An evil man out of the evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. For, of the, for, for that which fills the heart from his mouth he speaks. So if your heart is full of it, your mouth is going to be full of it. If my heart is full of goodness, then surely my actions and surely my lifestyle and the things that I'm going to do are going to abound greatly. We can, we can look at this from another angle, from another gospel writer in, in the book of Matthew, uh, chapter 12, verses 33 through 35. It reads this way. Either make the tree good and his fruit good, or else make the tree corrupt and his fruit corrupt. For the tree is known by his fruit. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart the mouth speaketh. Verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You could come down with me to my house and we could go into our storage building or into our closet. And I could, I could say that I am wealthy and I could say that I am rich. And I could say that there are gold bars in my cabinets, but there are not. Because I don't possess them. I don't have any gold bars. 
I have not robbed Fort Knox, and there are none in my home. I could say all day long that I'm wealthy and rich and have gold in my home, but the only gold I have is a wife and children and the good things that God has given me, right? But, yes, that was brownie points. <laughs> it is very important what is in our heart. This tree, we know a tree by its fruit. This tree right here is fake. We pulled it out of a box last week. It's not going to grow oranges tomorrow. If it does, we got problems. This tree is going to just be a decorative holiday tree. Okay? But if it possessed the right things inside of it, if it had come from an orange seed and had been planted in soil, it would have something in it that could bring forth good things. It is so important tonight what we have in our hearts because we cannot give out good things if we don't first possess it ourselves. This church cannot reach this community if the community is not in our hearts. We can't reach lost souls if we don't care about the lost. We can't reach children. We can't, we can't uh, make uh, lives change if we don't believe in the gospel of Jesus Christ. But I have good news for you. I believe this church does believe in the gospel. And our pastor is pushing us and giving us vision. And this church is going to reach this community because it's in our hearts. It's at our heartbeat. We're reaching up to God and reaching out to others. Amen. Now you have to ask yourself this. If you feel drained and you feel weary constantly in your body, it could most likely be because you're not eating properly or having a proper exercise. And this is not a health lesson. But just look at what you're eating physically. It affects you physically. So the same would be true in the spirit. If we feel weak and we feel tired and unable to accomplish God's mission, then take a look at the last time that we fed our soul. And Pastor did an amazing job last week talking about the fresh bread every single day. That was an incredible, incredible way to just think about it. I opened my cabinet to fix a sandwich the other day, and there was my bread full of preservatives. And I thought, I wish I could have had fresh bread made right now. But I get to have that in the spirit every time I connect with the Lord. And that is what should be abundant in our heart, is a walk with the Lord, feeding our soul. I would say this. If you're reaching into the box of the spirit of your life and looking for some weapon or looking for some energy to defeat the attack of the enemy, you better have spent some time on your knees or in the word of God or there's not going to be any weapons in those box. There is going to be no abundance for you to pull from. Yes, God has grace and yes, God has mercy. But he's not just a God that we push a button and all of a sudden he does things for us. We ought to be spending that time and filling those boxes in our life and in our heart with prayers and fasting. Storing up for a time when we're going to need that overflow to help us when we feel like we're short and we can't make it any longer. And I need to remind you as well and myself that we cannot make it alone on our own power. We, we can reference the stories in Luke chapter 12, several verses here. We'll start at verse 13. And one of the company said unto him, talking to Jesus, Master, speak to my brother that he divide the inheritance with me. And he said unto him, Man, who made me a judge or a divider over you? And he said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. We might feel that we possess many things, but our possessions must be heavenly. Our possessions must be of his word. It must be of time with him. And somebody said, amen. We can't make it on our own smarts or our own bank account. We've got to have some possessions with him, some eternal bank accounts, some things stored up with the Lord. Continuing on verse 16, it says that Jesus spake a parable unto them saying, Uh, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully, and he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do, because I have no room where to bestow my fruits? And he said, This is what I will do. I will pull down my barns and build greater, and there I will bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much good laid up for many years. Take thine ease, eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? So is he that layeth up treasure for himself and is not rich toward God. 
I would hope I don't spend, I hope we don't spend all our time laying up treasure for ourselves and thinking, well, now I'm set. Now things are okay. Because if we do that, we won't be rich toward God because we need to be trusting in Him, leaning on Him, believing in Him. Does anybody want to be rich in the Lord and not in your own self? Why don't we just put our hands together? Lord Jesus, I don't want to be rich of my own goodness. I don't want to be rich in just my own good behavior. But I want to find my richness and my righteousness in you. I want to abound in good things tonight. Amen. Jesus told us that he had come to give us life and that we might have it more abundantly. John chapter 10, verse 10. The thief cometh not, but for to steal and to kill and to destroy. I am come that they might have life and they might have it more abundantly. I don't think that that just means that we could be comfortable, that we could live comfortably and not have to have any wants or needs. I believe that God is giving us what we need, that it would fill our life, that we would be full, that whatever we need, He can fill that void. He can fill that gap. We don't have to find it anywhere else. This, the thief is only trying to remove things from your life because it's going to make you feel empty. It's going to make you run to other places. But Jesus says, don't run there. Run here to me. I'll fill you up. I'll make your heart full and abounding of good things. Amen. And it's not just junk like it's in your attic or in your storage building. This is good things. And so you might ask, well, what would he want us to possess, Brother Reiki? What did he come to give us? Because I could take you down to my house now and show you all the things that many of you have given me. And things that I have given to my children. And things at birthday parties. And we've given them because we thought they needed them at the time. And how many crayons in the world does a kid need? Or how many Hot Wheels does a kid need? More than my, not, uh, less than my kids have. That's what I should say. Less than what they have. But he came to give us something way more incredible than the things that you and I all hold in our, in our sheds and in our boxes and our attics and our storage buildings. He came, first of all, to give us the baptism of his spirit. That's why he robed himself in flesh. That's why we're celebrating Christmas very soon is because he decided, I've got to come to this earth and show everybody how to live. I've got to perform some miracles, and I've got to go to a cross and pay a price so that I can rise again and send my spirit into their life. I need to fill them abundantly with that life that I'm talking about. I breathed the breath of life into Adam, but now I've got to breathe an eternal life into their lives. He came to give us the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And so tonight, I hope that you remember that the gift of the Holy Ghost is the greatest thing that could be abundant in our heart. I hope we're full of the Holy Ghost. I hope we're not ashamed when we're praying to let the Holy Ghost come over us. I hope that this church, that the altars are always here and speaking in other tongues. I hope our Sunday school rooms and our trailblazers and youth room, that the Holy Ghost always is moving and breathing and living in our lives. Jesus told even the smartest of men of his time, named Nicodemus in John chapter 3. He told them when Nicodemus came to him by night and, and he said, look, I know you're smart and you're doing all these miracles. And Jesus says unto him in verse 3, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. At this time, everyone was wanting to see the kingdom of Jesus established on the earth. They wanted to see the Romans overthrow. They wanted to see Jesus establish some kind of throne and some kind of earthly kingdom. But he didn't come for that. He came for an eternal kingdom. Aren't you thankful it wasn't just an earthly kingdom? Because if he'd done that, that might have passed away. But he set up a heavenly one that's lasted thousands of years. Hallelujah. Except a man be born again, he can't see the kingdom of God. What a gift. What an abundant box that the God, has, God has put into our life. And him and Nicodemus have this dialogue back and forth. And Jesus tells him in verse 5, he says, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the spirit is spirit. Marvel not that I said unto thee, ye must be born again. And that's when we're baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. That's the baptism of the water and the bap and born of the Spirit is when we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, speaking in other tongues like Billy got to do just a couple of weeks ago. Aren't you thankful God's still pouring out His Spirit? Aren't you thankful the waters of baptism are still being stirred? Oh, I want to have an abundant supply of the gift of the Holy Ghost Amen. moving in my life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And then Jesus 
He tells them in Acts chapter 1, verses 4 through 8, he, he, we, we go through here in verse 5, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. They came together and they said, Lord, at this time, restore again the kingdom to Israel. Verse 7, he said unto them, It is not for you to know the times or the seasons which the Father hath put in his own power. Verse 8, But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That was not just our ticket to heaven, but it's our ticket to go help other people. It's our, it's our great commission to go out. It's our, the, the power that's within us. The Holy Ghost is to be there to save us, but also for it to abound so we can save somebody else. Somebody say amen. amen. I want to be full of the Holy Ghost because it leads and it guides me. It comforts and it counsels me and it inspires and it instructs me. There have been so many times the Lord has pointed which way to go. He has touched my heart and told me that's not something you ought to be doing. Or this is something you ought to be doing. This is where you need to go next in your life. This is where you ought to go. I'm thankful that from the abundance of my heart there is the gift of the Holy Ghost. Are you thankful for the power of the Holy Ghost? Somebody say amen. Amen. I would think another thing the Lord would want us, one of these boxes of abundance in our life, would be that we possess a love for him and a love for others. If you have heard me preach once or twice, you've probably heard me reference this passage. Mark chapter 12, verses 29 through 31. And Jesus answered unto him when, when someone had asked what's the greatest of the commandments. The first of all the commandments is, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord. Referencing Deuteronomy 6.4. Verse 30, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul and with all thy mind and with all thy strength. This is the first commandment. Verse 31, and the second is like, namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandment greater than these. I would say something that ought to be abounding is something that ought to be, uh, there, there ought to be plenty of boxes of this in our life is that there should be boxes that are labeled love for God and a love for others. And I would say this, that loving God is loving his mission and it's loving his people. So if you don't love his mission and you don't love his people, I would say that you're not loving God. And we ought to adjust and say, if I've got to love God, then I ought to be loving his mission. I ought to be loving his people. Doesn't mean that I have to get along with everybody, but I've got to love them. I've got to realize they're my brother or my sister. And in my opinion, this is, this is my editorial page at this moment. In my opinion, the wonderful benefit dinner that happened here this afternoon was a beautiful sign of goodwill to one of our church family members and their family. And I pray that your heart and your mind and your pocketbook and wallet felt the same way this afternoon. Why don't we thank God for what happened today where we bless a church family. That's loving God and that's loving his mission. So you got to look at yourself and ask yourself, we need to ask ourselves, do I possess a selfish or a selfless attitude? Do I think of self first or do I think of others first? Because loving God is about loving others as well. I would say loving God is not loving the things of this world. 1 John chapter 2, verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. We ought to take a serious inventory of our lives. Some of us may need to unpack and get rid of some attitudes or behaviors that are causing us not be able to not be able to love God first or love others first. Some of us may be loving something on the screen more than we're loving our time with the Lord. Some of us may be loving someone else instead of loving the one we ought to love first. Some of us may be putting some things in the way. We may have too many boxes that aren't labeled love for God and love for others. I hope that we would look at the inventory of our life and say, I need to make some adjustments tonight because I need to love God first and love others as well. I believe that David conquered the giant Goliath, not just because he said, woke up one day and said, I want to be a giant killer. But I think it was because he stepped out and he realized that that giant was defying his God and was defying God's people. And that proves to me, in my opinion, that David must have loved God and he must have loved God's people. Because when he went to deliver the lunch for his brothers, he says in verse 26 of 1 Samuel chapter 17, And David spake to the men that stood by, saying, What shall be done to the man that killeth this Philistine? 
and taketh away the reproach from Israel. For who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? He's saying, who is this guy? He's an enemy. He doesn't believe who we are, and yet he's attacking our God and attacking his armies. What are we doing? Isn't there a cause? It said, I believe, in the next verse. Now, skipping down to verse 45, after, after David and Goliath are bantering back and forth, he says this, You come to me with a sword and with a spear and with a shield, but I come to thee in the name of the Lord of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom thou hast defied. Verse 46, This day will the Lord deliver thee into mine hand, and I will smite thee and take thine head from thee, and I will give the carcass of the hosts of the Philistines this day unto the fowls of the air and to the wild beasts of the earth, that all the earth may know that there is a God in Israel, and all this assembly shall know that the Lord saveth not with the sword and the spear, for the battle is the Lord's, and he will give you into our hands. You see, when, when, it, when the enemy tries to attack somebody in the church, when the enemy tries to attack you, you ought to say, you know what, you're not just attacking me, but you're attacking God and you're attacking the whole family of God. And you don't stand a chance, devil, because my God is not going to let me down and the people of God, we're going to rally together and we're going to believe because we're not just fighting of our own power, but we're coming against the enemy in the name of the Lord. Somebody said amen. So when's the last time that you were willing to fight for God's cause instead of fighting with him? When is the last time you were willing to fight for one of God's people instead of fighting with one of God's people? Let's get rid of selfishness and allow him to possess our time, our energy, and our resources. His kingdom depends on it. We've got to have abundance. We've got to have sacrifice. We've got to have servitude. And that only comes if it's in our heart. We can't just do it out of obligation, but we're doing it because I love the Lord and I love his people and I love his kingdom. Somebody said, amen. amen. One of the major reasons we become selfish and begin to possess worldly attitudes is, be we, is because we forget where our real home is. The third thing and final thing, there's probably many of them, but just the three I'm going to highlight tonight. This is the third one is that we need to possess an eternal mindset that this world is not my home right now i live at 802 west 5th street and by thursday if our closing goes well i'll live at 20 shadow creek court drive shadow creek drive st peter's missouri 63376 that may not even be my final home but someday there's a mansion up there that I pray I get to see and I get to walk on streets of gold and see a crystal river and walls of jasper. And so I've got to be real careful how I live down here because I want to make sure I get to that destination. I've had to turn in a lot of paperwork to get to 20 Shadow Creek. But you know what? I've just got to live a life that pleases the Lord. I, I, I don't have to qualify for a loan. I don't have to have so much money to get to that home. I've just got to please the Lord. I've got to be full of the Holy Ghost. Follow this good book here. Follow this paperwork. And I'm going to get there because of the abundance of my heart. I'm not looking just to live on this terra firma. But I can't wait to get the streets of gold. Anybody with me? You can't wait to get to heaven? Oh, yes, Lord. Jesus, when you're ready, take us home, Lord. We know we're not just living here because when our eyes get stuck down here, we, that's when we can begin fighting and wrestling with our time and our possessions and we begin to stack up our lives. And before long, we might seem that we're rich in what we have, but we've, all, we've, we've become poor in the Lord because we've held on to everything. Our hearts ought to be abundant with the thoughts of heaven. And when that happens, our hands are going to be open and we're going to be able to give thoughtfully to those in need like we did today we're going to be able to give to christmas for christ and she's for christ and save our children and global missions and this church and our tithe and offering why because we realize you know what jesus has just given me this paycheck so that i can help bless his kingdom and i can pay for my bills and i can get my, my family fed and my home it's not so that i can get rich because when they put you in the coffin you can't take it with you anyhow right. somebody said amen when my mind is on heaven, it's a lot more difficult to be thinking about my selfish desires and temptation that the world puts in my path. And streets of gold and gates of pearl and walls of jasper, that's not really what I'm looking forward to. Or a crystal river. I'm looking forward to the one who's going to be sitting on that throne. 
And when I get to take the crown and cast it at his feet and begin to worship him forever and forever and forever and forever and forever and forever. And we could go on and on. And that thought just kind of makes your insides kind of get all wiggly when you think about forever and eternity. When you just stop long enough and quit thinking about how this isn't working at your house or your plumbing. You got this issue or you're not sure if the check's going to clear tomorrow. When you just stop long enough. If I just trust in the Lord, he's got a place where all those worries, all those health problems, all those things, all, 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 all that turmoil that's going on in, our, in, in your family, all, all, all that upside downness that's going on in your life, he's going to make those ways straight. He's going to make that pure. He's going to make that lovely. He's going to make it amazing someday when that trumpet sounds. When your eyes are on the prize of heaven, it becomes more difficult to look at how big your house is or how big the balance is of your savings account or how many toys and extra things you have in your life when you're looking up here instead of looking around here and comparing to what you have. And instead of reading on here all the time, the ever-changing opinions of man and who they thought was going to win or wasn't going to win the election, we ought to be reading in here the eternal words of the Lord, the opinions and the thoughts of man. They change. They go back and forth. They don't even know what they're talking about half the time. But he knows what he's talking about because these words have lasted for thousands and thousands of years. And it says this, search the scriptures for in them Think ye have the eternal life, and they are they which testify of me, Jesus said in John chapter 5, verse 39. Search the scriptures, for in them ye think ye have eternal life, and they are they which testify of me. What words are you leaning on? What abundance of time are we spending? And I'm not pastor, but he hit on it last week, so I think permission is open. And I'm talking to myself, too. If we're spending so much time on this or on the computer or on the newspaper or whatever, and we're not here, then what's going to be abundant in our heart is going to be this instead of this. And so I need this because this is going to get me there. This isn't going to get me there. Amen. Amen. I'm all fired up. I'm not going to apologize. Colossians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. If ye thee be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above. I would say we're risen with Christ. If you've got the gift of the Holy Ghost, you're risen with Christ. We talk about being buried with him. We talk about rising again. This is him. This is it. Being risen with Christ. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. He's in the, he's in the position of power. Set your affection on things above, not on things of the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. I hope that people see that my life and our lives are hid in Christ. That they don't see us as who we are down here, or what our title, or what our business card might say about us. But I hope they see that's a Christian. That's an apostolic. That's one of those Pentecostals that, that talks in, in, in tongues. And that's one of those people that believes in holiness and righteousness. That's one of them people that when I pray, they're going to they're gonna touch the throne of heaven. That's one of those people that I want my kids to go to that youth group or that children's program. That's the kind of people I want to be around. That happens when you're not worried about what your title is or what your address is. But that your title and your address comes from him. Somebody said amen. amen. Luke chapter 8 verse 14. You can come to the music. I'm coming to a close. Luke chapter 8 verse 14. This is the parable of the, of the sower putting the seed out. And some of it falling by the wayside. Some of it falling onto good ground. This is, this is just one little verse I like to pull out of that story. Verse 14. And that which fell among thorns are they which when they heard go forth and are choked with cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. They had the word, but they also had cares and riches and pleasures of this life. And they were able to bring no fruit even though they might have received the word. They might have said, I believe that, Brother Rankin. I believe that, Pastor Martin. I believe that. But because they also had their eyes down here, they weren't able to bring the fruit to perfection of treasures in heaven. I've read that someone once said this, we are called to be world changers, not world chasers. I hope that we are, have a mindset that from the abundance of my heart, not only do I speak, but I want to live and I want to change a world, not let the world change me. Would you stand with me? I want to open this altar to our church family and for us to all gather around. Maybe, maybe dads, moms, you'd come get your young people and your children. Maybe there might even be two or three generations of family members and you just gather together and you would say, let's, let's stop and take a look at what things we possess.
What are the things that are possessing our hearts and our minds? Do I need to be filled for the very first time with the baptism of the Holy Ghost? Or do I need a refilling from the Lord very soon, even tonight? You need to ask yourself, am I putting Jesus first in my life? Am I loving others as I would love myself? And am I waiting and ready for that soon coming return of the Lord Jesus Christ? From the abundance of our heart, what will be said? Imagine with me, if you would, if we were so full of God's power, if we were so on fire for Him, that it would just begin to flow out of this church. It would just be a natural byproduct that when we live for Him and we love Him first, when we're full of the Holy Ghost, when we're loving others, and when we've got an eternal mindset, you couldn't, we couldn't stop each other from saving our friends because we would be so ready. We're, we're, we're chasing the rapture. We're racing against the coming of the Lord to try to save as many as we can, to get ourselves ready, to get our young people ready, to get our children ready. This altar is open. Why don't we come and take an inventory of our hearts? And if there's some things we need to unpack and leave here, or if there are some things that maybe have been left on the shelves for too long, we can dust them off and put them back into our heart. A a renewed love for God, a renewed love for others, a renewed uh, baptism of the Spirit of the Lord. Jesus, would you touch the Dewar United Pentecostal Church? Lord, I'm thankful for our...